Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to be making a necklace using products from the June 2022 edition of the Bargain Bead Box and it is called Solstice Warmth. Uh, but first, our encouraging word for today is Proverbs 31:25. She is clothed in strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. I love that scripture because I want to be that girl <laughs> that laughs without fear of the future. I try to be. All right, so what you're going to need if you want to make this necklace is you're going to need a length of bead stringing wire. This is seven strand, um, and I've got about 23 inches here. You're going to need some bead caps of your choice. These are just some little uh, bead caps that I ordered from Bargain Bead Box. Now, I'm not using the golds that they sent on this project because I'm making this for me, and I just prefer silver, so... Um, I'm going to be using these little bead caps. I do have bead caps similar to these available on my website as well. Okay. Um, I have two wire guards. I have two 2x2 two two crimp tubes. I have one toggle clasp. You can use any toggle that you've got. I have two of these um, metal beads. They were, again, available on Bargain Bead Box's website. I don't know if they still have them, but I just like them, and I'm going to use them in this necklace. I have some 4 millimeter jump rings here, little tiny ones. And I'm using these beautiful um, purplish, let's see what color they called these, if I can find them real quick on the... Yeah, Lavender AB, they are, they're beautiful, they're sparkly, they're just really pretty. I'm using some of those. I'm using this agate, or carnelian, I'm sorry, carnelian teardrop pendant, and I have put a jump ring through this. This is like a 12 millimeter jump ring, and I'm going to be, um, we're going to decorate this up a little bit, but we're going to be using this. I'm using the Sardonyx beads that were in the box this month, and I just thought these were so beautiful, and I wanted to make a necklace for myself using them because I like them so much, but I don't really wear much gold, so I wanted to do silver, and that's why the silver findings. And then I have got some um, ball head pins here, just, I don't know, 20 or so. May not need that many, probably won't, but we've got those. And your jewelry tools. And I think that's everything that you're going to need to make this necklace. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to string your carnelian teardrop onto, or put it onto a jump ring, and then string it on your wire. Because it's going to go to the middle. Okay, and then we're going to just do um, some stringing. So you can do this however you want. So I've got these beads, I've got these. Um, and I have these bead caps. So I think what I'm going to do, will this fit through this? It will, I think. Um, I kind of want to do something to act as a stopper. So let me see if I put these bead caps on here. If they will act as a stopper there or if they're not big enough. They may not be big enough for that, but I'm going to give them a try real quick. So I'm putting them on backwards, um, facing away from each other. And let's just see if this will work. Well, you know, it actually might. Okay. So I'm going to put those two on like that. I'm going to do two of the sardonyx beads and i'm going to pick out a couple that have a lot of the same color as this carnelian teardrop putting those on next one on each side okay one more bead cap on each one this time facing the bead <laughs> which I guess it was facing the bead before too, but they were facing away from each other. So putting them on. I'm going to do uh, one of the little lavender beads on each side. Sometimes these are hard to see the holes in. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to do these metal beads, and I'm going to do it with the smaller end facing down so it kind of looks like a fan coming up. Just so 
like that. One more lavender bead on each side. And that's looking pretty for a focal. Okay, now I'm going to do bead cap on each side. Uh, sardonyx bead. Now, let's see, I think I am going to go still for a couple that have a lot of the same color as the carnelian drop. So maybe this one here. These are so pretty. I don't even think I'd ever seen sardonyx before. I definitely didn't have any. I love it. It's beautiful. Okay, a little purple bead on each side. And then the sardonic bead again. And I'm just going to keep on with this pattern of the purple bead, a bead cap, and the sardonic bead until I run out of these bead caps, which is going to be soon. I'm getting down to the end of them. I don't have a whole big bunch of them. Yeah, I've got enough for one more on either side. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Purple bead on each side. Whoops. And I just dropped him right off into the floor. Have to chase him down in a little bit. So there's one. bead cap sardonyx bead bead cap and purple okay bead cap let's see which one do I want to use here Maybe this guy bead cap and purple bead okay so by running out of bead caps <laughs> what this does is it kind of creates a fancy focal area down here at the bottom and now all I'm going to do for the whole rest of the necklace is string a sardonyx bead and a purple bead alternating I'm going to do two on this side, sardonyx bead, purple bead, and two over here. And I may actually not have enough beads to do this. I may have to fill in the end with some spacers or some seed beads or something. So we'll see here in just a second. I'm going to do another set of two over here, and I'm just doing them two by two just to make sure that I have them even on each side and don't have more on one side than the other because I'm notorious for doing that. <laughs> Let's go with this one. It's pretty. Okay, two more over here. I'm making sure that I try to put the really colorful um, ones with more interest down toward the bottom of my necklace because those are the ones that you're really going to be able to see, especially if you have longer hair. Your hair will cover up some of the others. Okay, doing two more. Another set of two on this side, another set of two over here, whoops, and then it looks like I have enough for one more set of two on each side. So I'll go ahead and do it here. One, two, whoops, 
and one. Why do I have one extra bead? What did I do? Did I not do two on the other side? Probably. Let's lay it out and see. Yeah. <laughs> so I need one more over here. Told ya. Notorious for it. If I don't really concentrate, <laughs> I always do it lopsided. Okay, let's compare now. Make sure. And it is. Okay, so that's looking very pretty. Um, let me hold this up on myself. Yeah, it definitely needs more beads. Or, I have some chain here that I had laid out that's kind of pretty. I may actually do this chain up the rest of the way. That would be kind of cool looking. So, I think I may do that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp this. I'm going to go ahead and finish it just like I was going to attach it to the toggle. But I'm going to attach it to this chain instead. So I'm going to show you how to crimp here pretty in intently because <laughs> I've got a lot of people asking me about crimping. So first of all, let's see here. Um, let's measure this. I like this type of a necklace, which is not a tassel or something I want to be really long, to be between um, 21 and 23 inches. So right now I've got 16, almost 16 inches from the tip of my teardrop to here. Uh, so that leaves seven inches. So I need three and a half inches per side of chain. Okay, so let's do that. Let's measure, I'm just gonna measure four inches just to be safe. And these chains have this stuff. You can use any chain that you have, obviously. I just had this one laying out and I actually think it looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So, I'm going to do about four inches on this side, and I think I got this chain at the Intergalactic um, Gem and Jewelry Show when it came to Charleston, South Carolina. So I think that's where it came from. You can probably order it online if you just like get on there and Google like large link chain or something like that. I'm sure that there's stuff that will pop up. Okay. I really need to um, Google if there are any jewelry shows coming to Florida, to Orlando, or somewhere around. I haven't even checked, but I would love to go to one. <laughs> if anybody that's in Florida knows, please let me know if there's anything coming soon. It would be really fun to go to something like that. I haven't been to one in a long, long time. And I can't seem to get this guy off. I didn't have any trouble getting the other one off. This guy. Let's get a thinner plier here. There we go. That'll get it. All right. So these should be the same. And they are. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to crimp. Let me come in. All right, so let's start with this side. What you do is you take your crimp and your wire guardian. Now it's important to have good quality crimps and I get a lot of my um, crimps from, uh, Beadalon has really good crimps. Let's see, where else do I have them? I don't even know where I get them from anymore, but I just try to buy quality ones. Beadalon is really good. Let's see what this other brand I've got in here is. Beadsmith is really good as well. So those are two brands that I find are really quality crimp tubes. If you're buying the crimp beads like from China or somewhere, they just aren't as good quality and they're going to not crimp as well. So I didn't believe that until I tried it and it's true. <laughs> just so you know. Okay, so you need a good quality. This is a 2 by 2 crimp tube. And then here is our wire guard. Now the wire guard has these two little channels. So your wire goes up and around over and down through the other channel. And the wire guard is simply to guard the wire, what it says, to keep it from fraying or getting messed up. And then I'm going to put my chain right on my wire guard because this chain doesn't open, doesn't have open links. So 
and then you're going back through your crimp bead and through a couple of other of the beads down here and just I just go through a couple and wherever it comes out and then you just pull the whole shebang down there okay now these are Zeron crimping pliers I really do like them um, and I'm going to take this wire guard and bend it in till it touches itself. And I just like to do that. That's a personal thing. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. And then I'm going to pull this. I'm making sure that I'm not... Okay. Uh, okay, so you don't want... This is what you don't want. You don't want your wire sticking up like that over your wire guard. Okay, so you want to pull it down to where it's tight. And then you want to try to make sure... That your two pieces of wire in here are laying side by side like that you don't really want them crossed because what's going to happen is when you crimp this down it's going to put each little wire in its own channel okay so you got your crimping pliers here they are see that divot on the bottom in the back right there right there that's where we're going to be putting our crimp so you want to take your crimping pliers and lay your crimp in that back divot Pull it up. I like to just scoot it up like this. Try to make sure that your wires aren't crossed. And sometimes I will even take my wires and kind of separate them a little bit like this. You can do this on this side because you've got some leeway, some room. You won't be able to do this on the other side. But there they are. And I just like to kind of pull them apart just to make sure that they're each going to go in their own little channel like they're supposed to. So just pull everything tight and go ahead and with your plier you're just going to press down okay do it firmly when you press down if you can see it puts each wire in its own little thing okay so now you've got these other little grooves in your plier so if I close them up you can see them there's one two three of those little grooves I usually use the second one it just seems to fit most crimps and so I you turn your little crimp vertical in there and you just close it and what it does is it just closes it up like that and makes a little crimp okay now you can use a crimp cover if you want um, I'm probably not going to on this necklace I don't know I guess I could let me pull this tight I'm going to pull all this up and then we're going to cut this wire. We don't need that much wire hanging down there. I'm just going to pull that up. It goes through a couple of the beads just for security's sake. If your crimp would come loose, it would still be kind of through a couple of the beads. And then there you have it. And then you want to make sure that this is up over that little tail piece. Okay, and we're going to do the other side. Oh, and I lost a bead. Put another one on. Okay, so we're just going to do the other side here. Same thing. We are going to put our crimp tube on. And then our wire guard. Up and over. Take your other piece of wire put it down the other side and then I'm just going to put my chain right on there just like this now we're going to go back through the crimp and through a couple of beads now this side will be a little bit harder to see if your wires are crossed because you're you don't have the room you know to uh, like you did over on this other side to mess around with it so you just do the best you can. You pull everything tight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my wire guardian in just because I like to do that. Now I'm going to do the best to make sure that my wires aren't crossed and I'm just going to lay them in the little divot down there and crimp down. Then turn it vertically and close it right up. And there it is. Okay, so that's how you crimp. It's really not hard. It, a lot of it has to do with whether you're using quality products or not. And I know that that sounds silly. You would think that any little crimp bead would work, but I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Okay, so here's what we've got. 
that turns out, I think it's very pretty. Whoops. Oh, I need to zoom back out, don't I? Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. No wonder you can't see anything. <laughs> okay, so here's our little necklace so far. Now, we're going to take all of our little uh, ball head pins here, and I'm going to show you another technique here that's making a wrapped loop that I've had a lot of people asking about. So we're going to do some wrapped loops. So I'm going to take a bunch of these little beads, and I'm going to grab one of the ball head pins. I'm going to put the bead on. Okay, here we have it. And I'm going to take my pliers and bend this 90 degrees. Why wow, my camera is having issues. Let me check it a second. Okay, hopefully that'll be better. It's having trouble focusing for some reason today. Okay, so we're going to take that. We're bending at 90 degrees. And then we're going to go ahead and take our round nose pliers. Let me grab mine here. We're going to grab this in the bend. Okay, so just like that. Maybe I need to move this stuff off the screen. It's just, I don't know why it's having such a hard time today. Man, it's really having a hard time. Just a minute. Okay, I hope I haven't scratched my camera lens or something. Who knows? But anyway, I'm grabbing this in the bend and I'm taking the wire and going up and over just like this. And if you see, it makes a little question mark kind of shape there. Now we had our plier in it facing down like this, but we need to rotate our plier up. See? So it's holding it, holding the little question mark in the bend at the top. Okay? Then we're just going to take our wire under like this. So here's what we have, a little loop. We're going to take our chain nose pliers and grab it. And then we're just going to wrap. And you can do this with your fingers or you can do it with your other plier if you want. But I'm just doing it with my fingers. And you can wrap around as many times as you want. I go around, you know, a few. And there's what we have. And what we're going to do is we're going to hang a bunch of these little loops on here, okay? So you need to make a bunch of little wrapped loops. So just go ahead. I'm gonna do probably that many. I don't know, what is that? So I've got one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I'm gonna do about 20, okay? And then come on back. Okay, so I ran out of head pins at 16, so I'm stopping at 16, and we'll see. If I need to do more, I'll have to pull out more head pins. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open this little guy jump ring up here for a second. A big one. Okay. And I'm just, I'm going to actually remove him from this for just a second. Okay. Now, I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to insert onto this big jump ring, I don't know, five or six of them. That one's thing is too, it's loops too small. Okay, so one, two, three, four, I'm going to do five here, I think. Okay, and then I'm just going to put him back where he was and close that jump ring. Okay, so there's what we have. We've got some little dangles on here. Now, I want to make a few that dangle down too. So I'm going to take these little jump rings And I'm going to go ahead and just take like this guy and dangle him from this one. 
I'm just randomly doing this. I mean, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. I just want to dangle a couple here from the ones that are up here, if that makes any sense. From the ones that I just put on there, I'm going to dangle, probably I'm just going to do two. So this guy, and then we'll do one more. And let's see, we'll put him, we'll dangle him down from this one right here that's beside. Oh, that's the one I dangled that one from. So we'll dangle this other one from the one beside it. And I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of a cascading effect here. Or I'm going to. That's my intention. So just make sure your jump rings are closed up really good. Okay. So now we've got a level down. So now I'm going to take two or three of these jump rings. Put them together. Probably, I'm going to do three. So I'll put two on there. Close him up. And then... Put my dangle from this guy. And now I've formed a little chain that it's dangling down from. And I'm going to put it, um, let's see, I'm going to dangle it right from the one that I just dangled from the other one. So <laughs> the second level down, I'm dangling this one from that from the second level. So you got your first level, you got your couple that you put on a level down, and this is a further level down. And I'm going to make a couple of those as well. So these pliers are magnetized and all my little jump rings are wanting to stick to them. So let's do another um, string of three. These jump rings are so teeny tiny. It may be even too small to go through. No, it's going through. I was worried I'd made that loop too small that I couldn't even get this tiny jump ring through it, but it went. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to come over here to this side and dangle it down from just one of the ones. I don't know. I'm not even really paying attention. I'm just kind of picking one. Okay. And there we've got a little bit lower level. Now I'm going to take this. I'm just going to hook a single one on. And I'm going to hang this single one from, like, the second one down on the long one that I just put on there. And this is really just your own creative control. I'm just trying to make it look like, you know, there's a bunch up here and then some of them are coming down. Okay, I just wanted something on top of this carnelian teardrop. It was so plain, I just wanted to add something to it. And I think this is looking good. So I've just put one on here, and I'm going to put him way up at the top here. Because I want it to be, I want there to be a big bunch up at the top, and then them kind of cascading down. Okay. So each one I put on, I'm just kind of picking it up and looking at it. So as you can see, there's kind of a bunch at the top, and then it looks like some of them kind of come down. But I want to... Um, I'm going to cover up a little bit of this chain. So I'm going to take this guy. And I'm just going to hang him from this link right here. Or maybe even up a link. Yeah, right there. Okay. That's looking cute. I'm going to do another one. So 
Let's see what it looks like. I think I will do one from this length. So just, you know, put it on how you think it looks good. Yeah, these are cute. This is cute. Okay. I'm going to do another one. Hold it up here. I think this one I might go from here. So this bottom link on this long one, I'm going to hang one more. Just to give it one more little cascade down. Okay. And see, it's just a little decorative, decorative element to this teardrop. I've got two more. Let me pick it up here. I'm actually going to hang him from the longest one that's dangling down. Yeah, it looks pretty cute. And I've got one more. And I think with this last one, I don't know if I can get the jump ring in there. Yeah, I did. He's teeny. I'm going to go from the longest one that I just put on. I'm going to dangle one more down from it. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks really pretty. It just gives it a real decorative little element right in front of that. Okay, so there's our little focal with our dangles. Now I'm just going to put my um, toggle clasp and bar on. So here they are. And I think I'm going to use a little bit bigger jump ring than these for this because I, I'm a little worried that they'll not hold it really good. I have these oval jump rings. These are available on my website if anybody wants them. And I'm going to hook them on with those. So this one, I'm going to hook the bar on. If that'll fit through there. Yes, it does. And then this one, the ring. And here it is, super cute. Little necklace with these beautiful sardonics and these beautiful little um, AB lavender beads so i'm going to put this on a form and i'll be right back to show it to you all right so here it is in my light box i think it turned out really cute um i love these sardonyx beads they're just beautiful so i hope you guys enjoyed it um and if you did please subscribe to the channel if you haven't um, and give it a thumbs up and if you don't ring the bell you won't know when i upload new videos so if you subscribe, hit that little bell, and it will tell you when I upload the next video. I will be doing a lot from the Bargain Bead Box this month. And if you're interested in subscribing to Bargain Bead Box, I do have a coupon code for $2 off your first box or $2 off in their sister store. If you don't want to subscribe, you just want to shop in their store. So when you subscribe, you get a 30% off coupon to use all the time in their sister store, and you can use that as many times as you want. Um... So it really does pay to subscribe. It's only $20, it's $20 a month or something, $19.49, something like that. Very inexpensive. And you get all this goodness shipped straight to your door. So, And then you get the 30% off coupon too. So anyway, if you're interested, all that will be linked in the description box below. And I'm going to get off here and probably film another tutorial. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in that one. Bye.